Hello, and welcome to Basically Blood Bowl. And today we're going to be having a look at everything that Warhammer Community has announced today in the run-up to the Vampire release. So that's stats and skills for each of the positionals, as well as how the new iteration of Bloodlust is going to work. So without further ado, let's dive in. So all in all, the new stats make for a very interesting and strong team. Just by scanning over the stats, it's very easy to see that it's going to be a very risky team, but in the same token, a very rewarding team if everything goes your way. This vampire team now features some of the most prominent players in their respective positions in the entire game. And Bloodlust has also changed from its original incarnation into something no less interesting. There's a lot of information that goes with it, so let's bring it up on screen and read through it. So for all vampires with Bloodlust, basically whenever a player is activated, after declaring the action, they must roll a d6, adding plus one to the row if they declared a block action or a blitz action. So this basically means that if you've got a Bloodlust of three plus, you're going to be rolling a dice for a pass and hoping to get a 3+. plus. However, if you're in a blitz action, that 3+, plus becomes a 2+, plus because you're adding 1 to the dice roll. And if this happens, then bloodlust is not triggered and everything continues as normal. However, if the player rolls lower than the number shown in brackets, or rolls a natural 1, they may continue their activation as normal, though they may change their declared action to a move action if they wish. Now there's some confusion as to what this may mean, as to why you'd want to change it to a move action. I think this basically concerns the fact that you need to finish up adjacent to a thrall to be able to bite them. So if you were going to go for a pass action, leaving you isolated, you could change that so you run and position yourself next to a thrall, ready to bite them, and so not have a turnover go against you. At the end of their activation, they then may bite an adjacent Thrall Lyman teammate. And another interesting point here is that this Thrall may be standing, prone, or stunned. He doesn't have to be just standing. They bite the Thrall, and then immediately you have to make an injury roll for the injured Thrall, treating any casualty result as badly hurt. This, however, will not cause a turnover, which is very convenient, unless that Thrall was holding the ball. Now. If the vampire cannot bite a thrall because he's not placed adjacent to him at the end here, then we don't get what we used to see where the vampire used to run off into the crowd and bite a spectator. All that happens now is that the vampire loses their tackle zone and a turnover just declared. If they happen to be holding the ball, then that is dropped and I imagine treated as if it's a fumble. And finally, if a player who failed the roll wants to make a pass action, a handoff, or score, then they must buy a thrall before they perform the action or score. So all in all, I like this rule. I like the fact that you still retain your vampires, you still keep a full team rather than being penalised and basically end up fielding nothing but thralls. And in relation to Karina Von Rice and her special, she's going to end up biting an opposition player and effectively having a casualty roll automatically placed against them which if she's priced quite reasonably could be a very handy tool to have in your armory although yet again there's no mention of how she plays if placed on a different team within the sylvanian spotlight division this bloodlust article only defining teammates as thrall linemen so it's still a bit of a grey area. Next up they gave us more in-depth info on the vampire thrower and all in all there's now an argument as to whether the vampires now have the strongest thrower in the game. Here we see the stats, movement of six, strength all the way up to four, agility two plus, passing two plus and armor nine plus. So this thrower can take quite a bit of abuse as well as having really good passing and agility 
And also with Bloodlust sitting at 2 plus, it means that only a natural one can trigger Bloodlust. Next up, we have the Vampire Blitzer. Now, these are a Bloodlust of 3 plus. However, this only applies to movement, passing, and catching. So, blitzing and blocking applies a plus one on the dice roll, bringing that to a 2 plus. So, I can see this one being quite a good character to be putting up the front into the line of scrimmage. Just like the Vampire Thrower, they have movement of 6, strength 4, and agility of 2, but their passing is nowhere near as good, all the way out at a 5 plus. But they are built for battling, carrying Juggernaut as well, which is good because Juggernaut negates wrestle, fend, and stand firm if blitzing, and also treats a both down as a push, meaning all in all, quite a resilient positional. And finally, the last of the vampire positionals, the Vampire Runner. These have a massive movement 8, which could go up to a 10 if going for it. They have a strength 3, which is less than the other vamps, agility 2+, plus, passing of 4+, plus, and the armor value is slightly less than the others again coming in at 8 plus. They also have a bloodlust of just the 2 plus but no other unique skills. But the biggest win for this positional is that huge movement allowance. Then we have the thralls and these are the only ones that have their price confirmed. It's 40,000 that's unchanged from where they were before. They are movement 6, strength 3, agility 3 plus, passing 4 plus, and armor value of 8 plus. And their roles on this team are just basically the same as alignment, except they're also mobile blood bags. And what I'll imagine you'll see is thralls at 0 to 16, and then two options for each positional. And also, an interesting point from the other article that came out this week. And I did like the insight from the designers that the baggy sleeves are from showing how these once muscular players have been sucked dry by their vampire masters. I thought it was a really nice design touch. And then there's the Vargeist. Vargeist comes in at movement five, a big strength five, agility four, and armor all the way up to 10. So this is your wrecking ball strength five player. There's a bloodlust of three plus, but its main use is going to be smashing through other players. So this is going to become a two plus on a block or a blitz. Plus you've got frenzy, plus you've got claws. I think the Vargeist could be quite a devastating unit if it's priced right. So all in all, I think the vampires are a very strong team. That is when luck's in your favor and they are set up right. It's definitely not a starter team more of a niche specialist technical team but i for one can't wait to get my hands on it and yeah try them out and see how they play if you're in the same boat remember quick reminder pre-orders go live 10 a.m this saturday and before i go just on a side note there was a brief mention at the bottom of the article about blood bow 3 news the new Blood Pass is due and it's going to be Underworld Denizens this time. And yeah, while not what I really wanted, hopefully this will bring back some love to the game after what has been a disastrous start. So that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed this article and I hope you're as enthused about this new vampire team as I am. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now.